my wonderful interpreters and thank you again for tuning in. As you know by now, voting ends tomorrow, July 22nd at 9 a.m. So in this video, I have a voting update from Perk what Washington Interpreters is trying to do to alleviate this situation. Also reports from Interpreters about an appointment situation from Interpreting Works and other harassment news about whoopsie organizers bothering LNI Interpreters knocking on their doors. So without further ado, let's get into episode number nine of our election series. Please remember to pause this video at any time in order to read the information that you see on the screen. So we reached out to Perk this morning to inquire about the election and voting. And so they were able to confirm that as of this morning, only 463 LNI interpreters have voted. And so of course, we're only concerned because voting ends tomorrow at 9 a.m. So it only made sense from us to see if they could extend the voting period at least for a few hours until noon so that everybody gets at least the whole morning to cast their vote. And so all parties have to agree to this, so we're waiting a response from Perk and the other parties to see if this is going to be possible. But in the meantime, we want to encourage you to please cast your vote. If you haven't, call the Perk hotline if you need assistance or if you need a ballot because you didn't get one. Leave a voicemail, as you know, with your name, phone number, and email address and if they don't answer, so they can call you back. And remember your voting, your vote is secret. Don't share your PIN number and do not open the door to anybody wanting to confirm your vote or offering quote unquote voting assistance, which brings me to the next point. As you know, Woofsy has famously texted, called, harassed, visited interpreters since a few days ago, and the interpreters are not happy with this. What you see on this picture is uh, from an interpreter that shared what an organizer left at their door. And so they want to know if they have voted. And even though it doesn't say any writing here, this interpreter says, they also want you to share with them who you have voted for. And if you have not voted, they're offering you person in person assistance to cast your vote. This is the reports that we're getting from interpreters, very interestingly, because that defeats the whole confidentiality of the vote. And if you see right here, uh, they're, they're actually telling you in this little pamphlet there to scan if you have voted and also to start taking Medicaid and to also start taking DSHS social services jobs. Very interesting because we also have received reports from interpreters like this one, as you can see right here about interpreters not getting paid uh, by ULS. Yes. So this interpreter shared this with me uh, and that was actually from today saying that from DSHS uh, they had not gotten paid. And so, you know, I said I'll ask around because this is a dire situation, right? This interpreter contacted the HCA, the Healthcare Authority, uh, about the payments and they also said to him, you have to call the union, which is Wolfsey. And of course, you know how that's gonna turn out because they're not gonna do anything. And this interpreter says, now they face about seven weeks without uh, payment and no one to blame. And this is so interesting because these are the people from Wolfsey, okay? They cannot keep their house in order with DSHS interpreters. Uh, they're telling you to take DSHS jobs, but to not get paid, they cannot even solve this problem, but they have destroyed the LNI system wanting to take your union dues by force pretty much at this point, harassing you and all that, be, uh, asking you to become a member before even winning the election because they want those dues, and they have taken our mileage and all that. That. But this goes to show you uh, the duality and, and, you know, frankly, honestly, the hypocrisy of these uh, Wolfsey leaders. As you know, I also show you from time to time how LNI interpreters have been expressing themselves uh, through different WhatsApp groups that we've had since before this election. And so this interpreter right here is actually sharing an episode from last Sunday 
when he was out and about having you know the time of his life with his family and a Wolfsey organizer uh, showed up to his door talked to his brother asking about him because they wanted to confirm if this interpreter had had voted and who this interpreter had voted for Four. So as you see right here, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but this interpreter is extremely upset about this because of the voting confi confidentiality. And so there you go. This is just another example of how little respect they have for you. And of course, as you see right here, uh, this is how other interpreters have been reacting to multiple reports of Wolfsey organizers uh, pretty much harassing people, waiting sometimes for hours outside their door for them to come home only to harass them saying uh, we're gonna help you vote or let me know who you voted for or if you have voted just to be able to say and trick people into thinking that interpreters are voting for them and so this interpreter right here says you know they are on a very creepy vibe they want to report this to someone and you know of course saying that voting should be your business and no one else's as we have said many times Times in our video this interpreter thinks at the bottom it's actually an invasion of privacy but that's not all interpreters have also been reporting that they're not getting appointment texts they're not getting new appointments uh, since a few days ago this particular interpreter uh, on top says since Friday it, you know this is a lot of problems with this system since their implementation Another new development is that it looks like Interpreting Works is actually requiring a token for checking in or out. We're actually in the process of investigating how this is playing out, but uh, interpreters and providers are seemingly not happy about it as they think it is a waste of time. And this is actually from Interpreting Works. An interpreter shared this uh, with us earlier today. And it looks like they're having problems with people that are T-Mobile users. This is a situation playing out that happened last year, right after their implementation, where people were not getting text messages, they were not getting appointments, people are missing out. And of course, they're telling you now you have to go through a whole process, uh, you know, contacting, uh, uh, T-Mobile support or following these instructions, dialing some numbers, and just following a whole process that, frankly, interpreters feel they shouldn't have to be dealing with this. And apologizing for the lack of appointments is not going to make up for the hours, okay? Working hours from those appointments that interpreters have been losing because of this, in my opinion, highly incompetent situation from this company. In closing, I want to tell you this. The second voting period ends tomorrow. And just as I am ready to finish this video, we just received an update from Perk about our petition to extend voting hours tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. And of course, Wolfsey, the Washington Federation of State Employees, the gift that keeps on taking, refused to agree for extending the hours a just mere three more hours. Look at it for yourself. When we spoke to Dario De La Rosa this morning about this request, he did say that we needed to send the request today and that it would go through for only maybe a few more hours until 12 noon, only if all the parties would agree. But of course, as you see right here, Herb Harris from Wolfsey says he's not in agreement of extending voting hours. Oh, because the election materials clearly state that the ballots must be returned before 9 a.m., which he probably doesn't understand exactly how this works, even though they have been doing this for a while. They know that Daria could extend it a little bit, but they refuse to work with LNI interpreters. They don't want you to vote because we started the election process. They have not been in control. They don't like it. And they're not interested in more interpreters voting them out of the process with all the shenanigans and irregularities that they have been trying to pull out in this process. 
I still do not want you to be discouraged, but it is extremely important that if you have not voted, you please take some time to cast your vote. We don't know what's gonna happen. Nobody knows exactly who would be winning, who would be losing, but we, what we do know is that Perk told us uh, this morning that as soon as the voting period closes, we would have results hopefully within an hour after voting closes. So we will know exactly, but this is not the end. We may have a second runoff election. We don't know yet. We'll see the results, but please join our live stream tonight at 7 p.m. A link will be in the description box of this video where we're gonna be answering any last minute questions that you may have if you have not voted. Please call the PERC hotline number as we showed you if you did not get your ballot. Thank you so much. Hopefully we'll see you tonight and do not forget to cast your vote. See you later.